Welcome back to the Divorce TV show and we've got of course a wonderful healing at the end so get ready to end with a in a peaceful state but before then we're going to rock through with some uh, celebrity divorce news and I've got a special guest in, guest in the USA um, braving the time zones to talk about peaceful divorce and the kind of mistakes that people make with the finances and the children. But let's start first with the divorce news. And I'm starting today with a story from the Metro. We have Angelina Jolie is seeking the removal of the private judge in her and Brad Pitt's divorce case. Now, just in case you didn't know, a private judge, what we would call that here is an arbitrator. And you do have that option to have your own private judge. And it doesn't mean you have to be rich and famous to do it either. The maleficent mistress of evil actress wants to see Judge John W. Udekirk, the judge overseeing her divorce, divorce case disqualified from the proceedings because she claims that he failed to disclose his business relationships with one of her ex-husband Brad Pitt's attorneys. Now according to documents filed with the Los Angeles Superior Court, Angelina argues that the judge should be taken off the divorce case that she filed in 2016 because he was too late and not forthcoming enough about other cases he was hired for involving Brad's attorney and C. Kylie. The documents state that during their divorce proceedings, the judge has failed to disclose the cases that demonstrated the current ongoing repeat customer relationship between the judge and respondents counsel. And obviously you know, she wants to know that, that uh, the judge who's arbitrating the case is completely and totally impartial. So this all seems pretty understandable up till now, but I'd like to add that if you're not a famous fil film star, and you do use a private judge and arbitrator, it's normally quite quick. It, it, you wouldn't expect it to have lasted this many years. Angelina and Brad opted to pay for a private judge in their divorce case in order to keep the details of their divorce out of the public domain, although some legal moves must still be made within standard court procedure. And this is actually another great advantage of um, arbitration, just like mediation, collaborative law, keeps it out of, uh, tends to keep it out of the public view, much more private. The 45 year old actress em emphasised in her filing that a private judge must follow the same rules of disclosure and conflict of interest that other judges must. Documents state it doesn't matter if Judge Udeker is actually biased. Under California law, disqualification is required so long as a person is aware of the facts uh, that might reasonably entertain a doubt about Judge Udekirk's ability to be, remain impartial. Angelina and Brad, who were in a relationship for a decade before they got married in 2014 and have six children together, were declared legally divorced in April 2019, but parts of their case remain unresolved. Uh, this is definitely something that a lot of people do. They get the maybe the admin side of the divorce uh, sorted, but they haven't worked out the the, uh, the the financial side or maybe they've got issues around the children uh, divorce is, is uh, a little bit more complex than that so it's a shame that this is grab dragging on so long for them due to their private case it's not known what elements have not yet reached a conclusion but it is thought there could be a dispute about child support payments um, what, what was interesting about this for me is why would you suddenly decide that you don't want that judge there? Why would you question their impartiality? And um, obviously someone else had that same thought. So the Sun reported that Angelina Jolie's demand to ditch the divorce judge is a low blow and a stall tactic because ex-Brad Pitt is winning in the settlement, a family friend claimed exclusively to the Sun. 
Uh, might be a little bit over the top there, but it could be that uh, she's uh, not feeling that things are going well. But normally, when you use an arbitrator, you choose them in good faith, you do your research, and you trust their professionalism. So it may be that maybe things aren't going so well for her, and maybe this is a stalling tactic, who knows. But let's hope the nightmare will be over for them both soon. Next story coming up. Another one. Uh, US based though this is actually reported in the mirror clearly short of divorce news because it's it's a bit random um, I just loved it because it's such a great photo uh, this is about Hollywood actress Nicole Kidman who's pictured throwing her arms in the air as she left her attorney's office after finalizing her divorce from Tom Cruise back in 2001 so it's hardly topical uh, why they're reporting this now I don't know but Nicole Kidman's sheer joy after her divorce from Tom Cruise was finalized was caught on camera as she was pictured throwing her arms in the air moments after leaving her lawyer's office. The Hollywood actress, 53, split from Tom back in 2001 after 12 years of marriage and they filed for divorce citing irrecon irreconcilable differences. However, it took seven long months for the marriage to be dissolved, they say. Oh my God, there's lots of people who would think that was fantastically vast, but seven long months for the marriage to be dissolved and Nicole's celebration pictures struck a chord with many who had been through the process. And I wonder if there's any of you out there now who can see that sense of complete joy when it's all over and I think that's what I really liked about the photo. The actress was seen throwing her arms in the air and casting her head back as she seemingly expressed her relief. The couple fell for each other back in 1989 on the set of 1990 movie Days of Thunder with Nicole playing Tom's screen love interest. After the wedding, the pair went on to adopt two children together, Isabella, now 27, and Connor, now 25. Looking back on the marriage, Nicole admitted she felt like Tom protected her when she was a young, rising actress. In an essay for New York magazine, she wrote, I got married very young, but it definitely wasn't power for me, it was protection. I married for love, but being married to an extremely powerful man kept me from being sexually harassed. I would work, but I was still very much cocooned. When I came out of it at 32, 33, it's almost like I had to grow up. After the marriage broke down, Nicole rarely spoke about what happened between her and Tom, despite plenty of rumours swirling about why the pair split. Speaking to Red Magazine, Nicole admitted the split was partly down to the fact that she was so young when they tied the knot. She said, I was so young when I got married. I look back now and I'm like, what? I hope that some of you soon who are going through the process will be jumping up and down and waving your arms in the air with glee, not just because it's over, but because you've done it the best way possible for you and your children. And our last story of the show, of the news roundup, is one in the Daily Mail. Oh, this is a, a warning against statistics. They've got this one here saying, divorce numbers surged by almost a quarter in the 12 months before lockdown representing one of the sharpest ever rises I like this one because we've been told that uh, because of lockdown all these people are getting divorced but it's interesting that this huge surge came before lockdown even started divorce numbers or apparently we shall see divorce numbers have leapt by nearly a quarter in a year in one of the steepest ever rises there was a 23% increase in the number of finalized divorces in the 12 months before lockdown in the UK figures obtained by the mail show the surge is among the biggest since numbers were first recorded in the mid 19th century. Uh, and then, of course, they have to wheel in someone from the church. Church of England General Synod member Andrea Minicello Williams said, in our social structures, we have gutted marriage of its meaning as a solemn vow between one man and one woman for life. Mrs. Williams, head of the Christian Concern Group, added, if we change its meaning, it is in danger of meaning nothing at all. No wonder divorce is on the up. I don't disagree with her at all. It's a bit random how they've stuck it in here. Uh, it does remind me of when I put on a, a divorce uh, divorce show in, uh, in the UK once they the press were looking for somebody to from the church to say something similar to that and actually they ended up with a with a vicar who thought it was a brilliant idea and we ended up uh, having a great chat and he uh, even came along to the show so uh, but yes 
it's what we're going to talk about here is now I'm going to show you how bizarre these uh, numbers are. So don't get all excited and think that suddenly divorces have really peaked before lockdown. The trend points to the reversal of a 25-year decline in marriage breakups. By 2018, both numbers and rates of the divorce were lower than they had been at any time since 1971, the last time legal reforms made divorce easier. Only a fraction of the recent increase appears to be a result of delays in the newly computerised system for handling divorces that led to, a, to backlogs in 2017. Well, that's surprising because apparently there were quite big backlogs, but they're saying that's not the reason. The new divorce reforms, bitterly opposed by critics who say they will lead to the destruction of more marriages, are to come into force next year. Of course, we all know that that's complete rubbish, isn't it? Um, just making people not have to make nasty comments about each other and blame each other is hardly going to increase the divorce rate. Under the new system, divorce will follow automatically if either makes a statement that the marriage has irretrievably broken down. There will be no question of fault. Hurrah! A Ministry of Justice spokesman said, and this now negates everything we've just been told, the number of divorces finalised in 2019-20 to 20 was just 3% higher than the decade's average. So if you take it over a decade, it seems to be a different story. They added there has not been a significant backlog at any point or an increase in the time taken to process cases. Officials said that an improvement in digital handling of divorces since last September may have contributed to the increase. So it seems that this huge rise just before lockdown is really that they just got a bit quicker and better about processing them and so it looks like a whole load came through more quickly than they otherwise would have done. The, from what I understand, it, most of the time, certainly in the UK, uh, divorce rate doesn't ever really change all that much. Now, get ready to meet our expert interviewer interview for the evening uh, or the day if you're in the US. And I'm introducing you now to Lana Shearer. Hello Lana, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Oh, you've disappeared there all of a sudden. Where have you gone? Or maybe Lana will come back in a minute. So she seems to have lost her camera there for a moment. We'll give her the chance to come back in a sec. But what I was hoping to talk to Lana about was she is, um, uh, uh, oh, she is back. So she's going to be able to say it herself. Back. You are back. You're not going to go away again, are you? <laughs> I am not going away. Sorry about that. Steve. That's all right. We love live show because we have, oh, you've gone off again. Let's try and stay there. Try and stay there. So um, what, perhaps if you could perhaps start by telling us what you do. You, uh, you share a law and mediation. So you do... Uh, mediation but also family law as well are you a lawyer too i am a family law specialist i'm an attorney and my specialty is mediation um, i help people divorce in an amicable way through mediation i also do some litigation so i can offer some really great insight into the advantages of mediation over litigation do you think that there's any uh, conflicts at all between those two two roles? Um, so for people who are still kind of getting their head around even what mediation is, um, the idea that one minute you're doing litigation and the next you're holding a, a space for two people to, or usually two, not always, come to an agreement, it's it's like having two different heads on, two different personalities, isn't it? How, how do you manage that? Um, actually, I am the same person, regardless of which process I'm involved in. And so even in my litigation practice, I'm very cooperative. Um, I approach every disillusion um, in a, a approach of what's best for the entire family. So if people want to retain me to uh, litigate their case, they understand that that's the way I practice. So I will still, at every chance we get, try and settle those issues. Um, but mediation is really my wheelhouse and that's my preferred way to proceed, but I can't force people into it. So I do handle both. That's great. And, and can you say what part of America you work in and, and a little bit about the culture there of, of family law and how does it embrace that way of, of working as a lawyer trying to push for peace or is there a certain conflict there? What, what, what do you come up against? Sure. I'm in California. So um, it is a, a 
we have a very small family law bar where I am. And so we work with each other repeatedly, whether that be in a, um, a mediation case. Sometimes we have consulting attorneys who might help the parties. Uh, we also have a collaborative process, which is a wonderful hybrid between litigation and mediation, um, and then mediation. So it's very supportive of the cooperative process. Um, especially right now in the time we're living in with COVID-19 and the impacts on our court system, the delays are just astronomical. And so I am finding that this is a perfect time for people who really felt that litigation was their only avenue, they're rethinking that. And so my mediation cases have exponentially grown and I'm really happy to see that. I was speaking, I'm really glad to hear that, I was speaking to a mediator in the UK recently and she said that uh, apart from when someone gets a bit emotional and it's hard through online to to support and connect someone, she said that on the whole she's found that get doing the mediation online has been quite fast, that people just kind of get on with it and get things done and it's worked, she's been amazed how well it's worked. Have you found something similar? Exactly. Yes. I've been amazed and it actually was contrary to what I believed before. I thought it was important to get the parties in the same room um, to deal more with that emotional energy because and improve their communication around that to set them up for better communication down the line if they share children. But what I'm finding is these Zoom appointments are incredibly effective. And there's something about you're even closer, their face is closer, so you can read those emotions and you you still get that in-person feel, but that discomfort that they may feel of being in the same room is absent. So it's been lovely. I've really enjoyed it. And do you hope that this will carry on? Will this be a, something that clients can can choose, whether it's physical once COVID hopefully dies down a bit or continue on Zoom? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to incorporate it as a large part of my process because it's been really efficient and effective. And I know you wanted to speak about some particular areas that that you come up against all the time with uh, families who are going through through divorce and uh, to do with it fi finance and children. Is that right? Um, there's a couple of areas that I think it's really important for people to understand is the financial benefit of mediation is enormous um, because I also do litigation. I have a really key insight into that. Um, I can do your entire mediation case for the price of one litigated trial that may only handle one issue in your entire case. So the financial benefits are enormous, and I don't think many people really understand that concept. Um, but hand in hand with that is the emotional benefit of doing mediation, because having that one litigated trial on child custody, for example, where you are tearing down the other parent and um, it's really you know contentious and then two weeks later or two months later you want to ask that parent to trade time with you or to you know do a, a favor for you to cooperate with you in some way you cannot slap someone with one hand and expect to reach across the table and shake their hand with the other so mediation really helps the overall communication for the benefit of the entire family and reduce that emotional devastation that comes from having to go into court and, and really fight um, in, in usually a very ugly way against the other parent, someone you are going to have to deal with for the rest of your life, not just until your children are 18, for the rest of your life. Beautifully put, Lana. And can you put some numbers on that, just to give some examples? Well, so here in California, um, I just did a litigated trial on a custody issue two weeks ago, and those fees on that one issue, there's still many others to be handled, um, was about $12,000 for one issue, for one day trial. Um, overall, a mediated case can absolutely be handled for 12000 um, it, of course, varies widely depending on the issues and the assets to be divided and, frankly, on you know how well the parties are able to um, develop these positive, effective communication styles to help them reach settlements. But I have found that it can often be done for that price or less. 
And lastly, and I'm so glad to hear you say all that because we kind of know it's true, but often people don't literally just tell people the numbers and how massive the difference is. Um, the last question I have for you is, uh, I was I was in California, my brother lives in California, and I met a family friend who's a, 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 a lawyer. And is this true that in the, in the States, unlike in the UK, because they bought it in a few years ago, that you can't just, um, if you go to a lawyer in, in California, is it possible to not be fully informed about mediation, collaborative? Is there any legal necessity for family lawyers to tell you what all the different choices are? Sadly, no. There's no legal requirement that you be fully informed of all of your options. Um, it go, it's attorney by attorney. Many of the attorneys I know do inform their clients, um, but it is personal preference. And it's very sad because people honestly believe, a lot of people honestly believe that litigation is their only true avenue. And I wish it was, I wish it was better informed. And on that note, thank you so much, Lana, and uh, maybe get you back on the show at a later date. Thank you so much for yes. your time. Thank and we, you and, for you st and, you, and you stay with us this time. That was brilliant. <laughs> I promise <laughs> you, I will. <laughs> you, you did well. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's great. We're going to, uh, I'd like to tra travel often between the UK and the USA hearing our stories because there's so much similarity, uh, not just with the divorce journey, but with some of the issues and the lack of knowledge about the different choices that there are. So we're going to go now to our quick brief masterclass. So get prepared for some learning. Uh, I made a little uh, uh, five key stages in your divorce plan um, in the dentist today, actually, while I was waiting for my son having some dental work. I just wanted to summarise sort of five areas of the journey that when I'm uh, working with people that I take them on. So I'm going to just give you a little rundown of the first one. Uh, and what I usually do with people, I do a lot of, of free free stuff, but obviously sometimes people need need a little bit more time. So we, I do do uh, an initial, which can often just be a one-off initial divorce strategy. And these tend to be the areas that I cover very briefly. And I'm going to share it with you now, because if you are on the, uh, any part of the divorce journey, it's never too late to kind of go back and, and put your little beginnings of a plan in place, because it can make the rest of it flow a lot more easily. So gather the facts. I mean, I know that sounds obvious, but uh, it's amazing how long it takes. Like in the UK, you, you fill in your for me. People wait ages before they do it. They dread it. And really, the first thing you should be doing is gathering all that financial information, uh, simulating it. So you've got it all ready to hand because you can't make any proper financial decisions if you haven't got key information. It shouldn't be something that's left to the end or worse still for your partner, your spouse's lawyer to nag you about to, to send in. The other one is to, um, and, and when I say gather the facts, that, that's also mortgage. Can you get a mortgage? It's talking to the right people. So um, talking to the right experts is doesn't mean just having a chat with a lawyer. It's talking to financial experts. To um, coaching can be very valuable to help your mindset. What if you don't know what kind of a future you want? If you are all over the place and you're really suffering, then uh, healing. There's all kinds of healing modalities. It might be counselling. It might be uh, EFT might be meditation. Meditation should always be on the list in my, in my book. And we're going to have a lovely meditation at the end of the show. And the the initial plan, and it's your initial plan at the beginning, because until you start talking to the financial experts, checking out, you know, can you use mediation? Would you be better with collaborative law? Until you start getting a sense of all that, you can only make a, an overall plan of what your intentions are. But that's a really good start. And it's also the thing that most people don't do. And in effect, what you're creating is a boot camp for mediation and for any form of dispute resolution, because it's my firm belief that the reason some people don't manage to make dispute resolution work isn't because there's anything wrong with mediation or collaborative law. It's because they haven't done their homework and they're not ready and they're not prepared emotionally, psychologically, practically just with the right information and they haven't really worked out what they want they're too busy hanging on to what they have instead of thinking about how they move forward so all of this kind of adds up to like a boot camp for dispute resolution 
So hopefully that's useful to some of you and we're now going to go to a shared story. It's a recorded one um, by a uh, mediator who has written a book for children as a way to help them understand mediation and hopefully also their parents and the teachers who will also learn from it. It's quite clever, so listen to what she says. I have witnessed as a lawyer back in my country numerous of cases where parents were using um, their children as messengers for exchanging hatred notes to each other. Parents that were asking their children to choose with who they would like to live, to manipulate their child in order to estrange it from the other parent and so many more. Parents are for their children superheroes and talking bad about them destroys their inside compass that orientate who they are and where they go in life. So if you want them to, to save you a seat to their school graduation or to their wedding or to be the one who is going to hold their first baby, then take care of your conflicts with your exes right here and right now uh, by at least giving a chance to mediation. My name is Dimitra Muscioli and I'm the writer of the book The Elephant That Blows Rainbows, a fairy tale about mediation. The butcher and the weasel have a fierce disagreement. The bear intervenes and uh, together with the tortoise they become their counsels in the court of the wise owl. Um, although they wait for, for hours for their turn to come, um, in the end, the case fails to be tried and um, our animals, the wizard and badger, are left without any solution in their hands. Then the tortoise suggests something they have never heard before and despite uh, the bear's resistance and the animal's mistrust, they finally decide to travel to the jungle to meet the elephant that would help them find a solution in a completely different and revolutionary way. Um, all this time, the badger and the weasel uh, have not been able to communicate uh, together, to articulate conversation. Uh, since the bear and the, and the tortoise were speaking uh, on their behalf, but with the encouragement of the elephant, they managed to tell their own side of the story, to listen to what the other side had to say, to, to shut down their defenses and finally find the solution that suited them best. So why a children's book about mediation? I truly believe that if you want to change the world, you have to focus on the kids. Radical changes can only start from our schools and families when children's hearts and minds are still open uh, to accepting the new. So if, if mediation becomes a well-known concept to children through school mediation, for example, a, a program that I love and deeply, deeply support, or through fairy tales like, like this one, then as adults, mediation will be the, the first stop for resolving any conflict that will arise in their lives, whether it is with their employer, uh, their neighbor, uh, their friend or their partner. It's much easier to leave it to, to someone else to decide um, and then complain when, when all this fails. Uh, in addition, another reason why people are afraid of mediation is that no one has ever taught us how to communicate our needs and feelings in a productive way. Um, every time we feel threatened, we either attack or take a defensive stance. As we, we have limited conflict resolution skills, but these behaviors block the dialogue and strangle the creativity when it is time to brainstorm solutions. Another reason is that we do not trust that we alone will find a solution. 
We think we are neither smart nor trained uh, enough or educated enough to, to lift such a huge burden. But I, I feel that we, we forget the most basic, that we know better than anyone what is best for us. Uh, taking the opportunity, I would like to stress the, the importance of mediation as a great tool, especially in divorce conflicts. Being a parent is a role that never ends. No matter how good husband or wife you were, you still have the responsibility to raise your children and your duty is to keep the communication on with the other parent, no matter what. Only in the security of, of this process can we accept that there is another point of view. Um, think creatively outside the box and realize that there are no such things as black and uh, white zones, but uh, a whole range of colorful possibilities, just like the rainbow uh, of my fairy tale. Uh, so Susie, I would like to thank you for having me here with you and by giving me the chance to, to talk about uh, my book. Uh, I really hope that uh, uh, children, parents and teachers and uh, mediators, why not, will will enjoy reading uh, The Elephant That Blows Rainbows. I will be making sure we get links to that um, on this when it's uh, all rendered and doing its thing online. I love that idea that uh, we don't feel that we have the power to find a solution ourselves as being one of the key reasons that people fear mediation. She said so many wise things there and I love that passion and the idea that there's a mediator creating children's books is just wonderful. We need more mediators, more peacemakers who are prepared to step out of the box, stick their head above the parapet and really fight for peace. And uh, thank you so much Dimitri for, for sharing that with us. Now, very swiftly, we're going to do a super fast workshop roundup of, of the workshop and other cool things that we have, and then we will be coming to our healing session. Divorce Financial Workshops over half full already, so if you want a place at the next one on the 10th of September, this is a UK workshop supported by Wellers, Wellers Law, Wellers Family Law, and uh, we've got an amazing range of experts, so um, if you use a QR code you'll be able to go through and, and join us on that. The um, I'd love to do one, I say it every week, I'd love to do one in the USA, so if there's any uh, mediation or law firms who are passionate about dispute resolution who'd like like me to run one there. We do them on Zoom and they are fantastic. Obviously you're already in the uh, divorce Facebook group um, but if you're not please join if you are if you are someone who was going through divorce obviously. Uh, keep it relevant. Uh, it doesn't have to be divorce, it can be family separation, lots of people aren't married. Uh, even more important to keep things peaceful then because you don't really have the same legal support that people who are married do. And this is our special little secret divorce group that's not on Facebook because not everybody wants to be on Facebook all the time. And I have loads of useful resources and various experts in there. So that's where people hang out and when they've got a bit of a question, that's how they find me uh, to ask it. I'm usually pretty good at getting back to them. And now we're ready. I'm getting myself comfortable in my squeaky chair and we're going to meet our healer, Sam Dosser, who's very kindly going to join us and take us on a little journey. Welcome. Hello, Sam, and thank you so much for joining us today. And what are you thank gonna you do very with much. us? What are you gonna do with us? So what I would like to do is I would like to take you a visualization uh, meditation is a deep meditation which will enhances uh, the entire uh, our body's uh, energy rejuvenated uh, each and every cell so let's begin with the journey and I will definitely hope you are all going to enjoy it 
And just before we do that, and obviously I'll get you to add information on the in the comments of, of this online, but just before we do, just give us a little, little taster about you. Why do you do this? What do you do? You know, is it meditations all the time? I notice you're called Create Your Destiny. So what is what is your the focus of your of your working life? So so thank you for that, uh, Susie. Uh, my uh, background is emotional intelligence. And this is a very hot topic uh, going through in the uh, corporate as well as with individual lives. So I'm a, a British, from the British Society of Psychology. I'm a certified uh, a psychometric assessor where I help individual as well as the corporate with regards to emotional intelligence, understanding your emotions as well as in the relationship we go through with those uh, raft of emotions going through. And that's where I come in. And I'm also a heart transformation healer. So there are two hats I wear, emotional intelligence as well as heart transformation healing. So today we are going to be doing the healing process, which is definitely is the key for all those people are going through with this um, journey. I've been through my journey as well, and I can completely resonate with all of you what you are going through. So hold tight. And as Susie has given you amazing information, follow it through and you will see the right uh, end results. So you now have the floor, Sam. Thank you very much. Let's begin with breathing naturally. Just be natural. Don't try to fast forward your breathing. Find a comfortable space where you just sit straight your back straight to your chair while you're sitting on the ground. Have, make sure that you are sitting straight. Just breathe gently. The whole thing is all about is breathing naturally. As you are breathing naturally, I would like you to imagine that the roots from your feet are growing and they are growing, growing, growing. And now they are penetrating your floor downwards. Further downwards, they are going towards the Mother Earth core. And that core is waiting for you to let it go towards that way. And I would like you to feel that anything which you are carrying on your shoulders or in your body, let it go with that roots going towards the Mother Earth core. And it's going downwards. I would like you to feel lighter and lighter and lighter. And the roots are growing so fast that it now reaches to the core of Mother Earth. And now is embracing it, the pure green light and taking away all those unnecessary, unwanted energies which you are carrying on your shoulders, on, in your body. Let that go away so the Mother Earth can completely embrace it and then pass it on to you, a pure light, pure energy to you. Take a moment. And if you see any colors, let them go. Any pains coming into your body from any part of your body, let it go. Believe in yourself as you are the manifester of everything. As Mother Earth has embraced everything from you, is providing you with a pure energy which is coming upwards now. The roots are blossoming, the flowers are growing. As they're coming upwards, you will see or you will hear, you will have a taste or you will have a touch you must have a feeling of the tingling in your feet that something is coming upwards. Allow it. Let it be. Let it come up. 
from your toes to your ankles. Let it rejuvenate each and every cell of your body, of your feet. As it comes upwards in your calf, in your knees, now coming towards your thighs and going upwards towards your tummy, spleen. Each and every cell has been rejuvenated by the pure light of Mother Earth. Let it come upwards towards your kidneys. Let it go upwards. Let it go into your chest, in your lungs. And let it enter your heart, the pinnacle of all the energies. Let your heart soothe. Let your heart heal. Embrace. Embrace that pure light and feel that it's rejuvenating each and every cell of your body. Going upwards to your shoulders and to your fingertips now. Feel that energy forming around you is so bright, is so vibrant that your entire body is going to be completely showered with Mother Earth light, Mother Earth energy. As it enters your throat, upwards towards your ears, your mouth, your eyes. Let's open the eyes and see the beautiful world around you. And now is entering the crown chakra as your mind, as your brain. And let it open so it connects with the universal light which is a pure angelic pure heavenly light so it can be connected with mother earth and the universal light as they come together let that energy comes into you so you feel protected you will feel supported you will feel you are being supported by that energy which is combined together from the universe as well as the Mother Earth. As they go both together, come into your heart. Feel that energy. Feel that, that you are completely immersed with that energy. And that it gives you all the purity all the directions, all the confidence and believe you are who you are. You have been given all the tools, all the directions in your life going forward. Believe in yourself and believe in the guidance you receive. As it comes that you are receiving this pure light. Give your gratitude to the universe and Mother Earth for allowing you to you become a vessel to receive this pure energy in yourself, to heal each and every cell of your life, of your body, of your soul, of your past, of your present and of your future. Let it be healed around you as you begin your journey. Believe in yourself. Breathe naturally, slowly and gradually. And when you are ready, I'm going to count to 10. Come backwards. Let's start. 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one. When you are ready, open your eyes. Breathe naturally. Thank you.
you. I could have stayed there for hours. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much. <laughs> so I'll, um, I look forward to you putting some links with more information on the um, on the comments, and I shall tag you in so you can find it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Maybe come back at some point and share your story with us. Absolutely. Good. Thank you. Right. I hope you're as calm as I am. And my yeah, the takeaways I guess today are very much it's you know we've been told by a California lawyer mediator absolutely that you can spend as much on one aspect of your divorce fighting it in court with all the rest still to do and possibly get the whole lot sorted for the same money in mediation probably less uh, I dare say that's pretty much similar to what we have in the UK I think it is good to put some numbers on it and I love that whole idea that people are frightened of mediation because they don't believe they're able to, to create that solution themselves but you're not doing it you're all on your own you're not just doing it even with a skilled uh, mediator to support you you have the option of boot camping and getting yourself absolutely ready so you go into that mediation with all the information uh, the confidence that you need and even as a, if there's only one of you doing that it changes everything so in the war of divorce on the battlefield of family separation always always make peace your weapon of choice <laughs>